Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know for a lot of us, this is um, some of our first um, getting out and seeing people. So it's been great to um, just watch Tony hug Sally and say, I haven't seen you in a year. So it's just great to um, see all that happening. Um, and this is very much the reason why we're so is the success that it is. It's really about the relationships that we develop and, and how we grow those relationships into a work product. So, um, thank you everyone for making the time to come out tonight. I'm going to give Mayor Sellers a chance to welcome us to his beautiful new facility here and we'll jump right into our program. Good evening. Let me first welcome everybody to the city of Wonder Heights, America, and I'm my own council president, Matthew Howell, here, and to my colleague, the mayor, uh, that has joined us today. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out today because this is, I think, this this project, if you, if some of you had a chance to tour today, is really about the first suburb and what can be done inside the first suburb. And so this is just rem uh, reminiscent of all the things that we always talk about, what can be done, right? Bandwidth is our own organization is extensive. It's only extensive though when we exercise. And I want to thank that when we, even in this project here went from a, just a, a, uh, a thought I had from the beginning to bring it to fruition. I felt by a bunch of people in town, right? So I want to first thank Cal, uh, I want to thank Calgary County Executive Arm Budish, who as we were structuring this deal, if you look around this room, it looks like, should to you, look like the county uh, administration board, right? <laughs> right? And so what, what Armand did for me was, he said, now let's talk about this. He said, do it this way and not that way. Right? And so I took that information to heart and said, to come back and start just putting the deal together. So I see Sarah Parks and everybody else that's been around here, Paul Hurley, everybody else here that has, that has helped. All these organizations are tremendously important to us as an organization. This today represents 25 years. Um, we haven't aged a bit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <Only my hair. laughs> and so what, what we have done is we've talked we've talked about a lot of things in these 25 years, but this is a chance to really see it coming fulfilled. This is a building that was sitting here dormant and dark, right? And with the expertise of uh, the group that helped me, uh, Thompson High Law Firm, uh, PMC Project <coughs> Consultant, uh, helped guide us down the pathway. I knew it could be done. I'd done too many economic development deals. I knew it could be done. I wanted to make sure that we were doing it the right way. Uh, you see in this building, for about $17.5 million into this building. If we had to build this building today, it's even $25 million today, right? So we got in, as Tracy said, right under the wire, <laughs> right under the wire. But these same opportunities exist all throughout the first suburb. They do, right? We cannot have fear to try to exercise that. It, it is okay to think outside the box. It's also a genesis good to rock other people like right? <laughs> I saw something somewhere else. It's like when I was playing ball. I saw that move over there. I'm going to copy it, right? I'm going to put my own spin on it, but I'm going to copy it. Right? So the opportunities for us lie here. I also want to thank Geist Companies uh, because we bought this off Geist, right? Who was a... Uh, Mayor is motivated self. <laughs> uh, you're stuck with it, right? So, it's a good position to start from. And I, I also want to thank uh, uh, Cuyahoga County Port Authority. So we did this building without taxing anybody, right? We did it through our savings of consolidating all our operations. We're in multiple buildings. We have five buildings here. They were in multiple buildings. So if you live here or had to do business here, it could sometimes be a pain because you had to stop many places to get your business, right? And so we were able to consolidate here. The only group that is left outside of this building obviously good reasons of uh, public works, uh, the fire department, and the senior civic center, which is in its own facilities. All those uh, units have their own facilities. So, but we were able to consolidate for this public, putting everybody in here together, along with the uh, Warrensville Heights City School Board as a, as a tenant side of the building as well. We were able to create one-stop shop for people in this community, and I don't think until we open the door, people realize the benefit of having a one-stop shop. So we have seen tremendous growth in our school uh, 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 school population. We're going from uh, when we, we uh, as a community decided to uh, come out of the three existing elementary schools and create one new elementary school, pre-K to five, and then we are building in the process of building a new middle school, a new high school, 
And then, so the state said that we were going to have a total population of 1,830 students. We are now at 1,790 students now. And so now I just have to meet today to talk about building another school here. We really need to alleviate, alleviate some of that pressure, right? It is a good problem to have. That means people have, have been, uh, been reinvigorated, reinvigorated about the community and the opportunities. But these same opportunities, I'm sure, I'm sure, I know they exist in every other community. They do, right? When I look around, great things going on in a lot of these communities here. We need to sometimes recognize what it means to be a member of the first summer, right? There's strength in numbers. You put all of us together, there's 700,000 votes out here, right? That can sway the needle, right? Now we had the congressional race here, that everybody knows, right? What swayed that for the suburbs, not the city of the people, right? If you go from Cleveland Heights, South Euclid, Euclid, Warrensville, uh, all that little core, Beachwood, all that corridor, that's one that makes, right? And every important issue in this county comes through the suburbs. Not to diminish the city of Cleveland, but that number comes through the suburbs, through the suburbs because we have more volume and capacity than they, right? And so I, I just want us to make sure that we exercise the strength. There are a lot of great projects going on here. I look at the land bank, Judge Roberts, Ken Kelly, doing these and, uh, great homes in Maple Heights and Mayor Blackwell here. I mean, we are creating opportunities where there were no opportunities, right? We're asking people to take risks. And they're really not risks. We just got to tell you it's a risk. It's not even a risk because when we do it, they come through and, and it gets swept up real quick because we see the need here. We see the need, what has to happen. Now, we have to catch the, sometimes the bank community has to catch up with us, right? But these communities are viable. They're more viable, right? They're the heartbeat, soul, this county. And so we want to make sure, the first suburbs, that we take the opportunity and time to exercise full strength, power, credit, and capabilities of our own organization and not be afraid to go out sometimes. People think it's on the end, I don't think it's on the end. I think it's the educated direction. Right? And sometimes you may fall down and bump your knees, skin yourself, right? But you'll learn something from that. If you do nothing, you get nothing, right? right? So that's been my model here as mayor. And so I'm here, I just want to welcome you here. And I know Jen has a great program for you, but today is a celebration of our organization, 25 years. 25 years of moving, moving real uh, projects, real legislation, real things to benefit real people. Right? The beautiful thing about being a mayor is you first touch. You don't count for the first touch, you're touching people. Right? This is not the this is, this is not the US House of Representatives. This is not the US Senate, right? You were moving. The same people you see in the grocery store about the problem. They're going to get you there, right? <laughs> See, the church, they're going to get you there, right? So you can't tell a lie because they're going to come back and bite you. So, but they want to deliver. So this is an example today of what we can deliver. As a, and I want to welcome you all here because this is just um, a, a great opportunity to show what, what, what you can do when you think from the outside. And I, and I want to, you know, before I hand it back to Jim, I don't want you to think that he came off from me. So I'm going to ask Chief Haynes, Kelly Wilson. So Chief Payne. And where's Karen? Is Karen in here? Karen's going. Alright, so Chief Haynes is the Chief of Police in Warrensville. Yes. Kelly Wilson is my chief of staff here. And Karen uh, Karen uh, House is our finance director. She just had to leave. But it was the four of us that met every day. Every day, every week. Every week, trying to figure out what we had. We had a short timeline, and you know, if you go to too many people, it's all going to get messed up, right? <laughs> and so, you had to go to people that were going to be biased, not a uh, non biased, and understand what the mission was. And so, these, th this group here really worked with the other constituents inside the building to get what they wanted, right? It seemed like it was long pulling team sometimes, but. I got to recognize it, but they did all the hard labor here, right? And so I had to come in and we all came together to make sure that this thing was delivered correctly. So anything you see here, these ideas came from probably these two, these two or three people. So I'm going to give them a round of applause. For them.
libations outside. So you're here to let your hair down. Have a good time. Enjoy the 25 years. Thank you again. to also thank you. This wraps up for many of you know when I have a, a new chair come on for suburbs, I, I get that chair for a three year time period. And uh, this year ends Mayor Sellers three years. And having known him for the 20 years that I've been with the organization um, in his different roles, it was a real pleasure to know what I was going to get when he came in as a chair. And, um, without getting tears in my eyes, I will just say you had my back every day of three years. And I appreciate that. I often look to see, and I would see that face walking on me. You know, you know that. Both of you went first. The brains behind this entire organization, aside from the executive leadership and all the mayors and everybody that contributes, Denver Kuzma does the work. She makes all the connections of the dots. She puts us all on the right page. So I want to recognize the efforts. I want all of the, all the mayors and the board to recognize. I know they do exactly who is getting it done. And it is a general proof of us. I'll take us through a quick presentation to make sure that everyone knows uh, what we've been up to here for these last 25 years. So welcome. Um, great to see you all again. It's, it's just a pleasure to see people in person and not in boxes. Um, this here represents our first suburbs. As many of you know, we started out as an organization of three or four communities that shared some same issues. Um, over the last 25 years, we've grown to represent over one third of Cuyahoga County, as Mayor Sellers mentioned. Um, we have uh, um, communities uh, as small as the village of Brooklyn Heights and as, as large as Lakewood and Euclid. Um, every one of them has an equal seat at our table, which is wonderful. Um, some of the things that we've been doing during this time, um, I'll quantify a lot of it, but some of this is just kind of big picture too that I really want people to understand. Um, we've been working across municipal lines for these 25 years, and we're really sharing what we know with one another to make sure that people who are coming into new positions can benefit from the wealth of knowledge that we have. Um, we're connecting to new resources. I, I have the benefit of attending a lot of regional events and bringing back information and contacts to the cities that they may not reach. Um, we're also um, taking on new challenges. But oftentimes, you know, staff wants to do something but finds themselves a little worried. How am I going to do this on my own? Many times we're going to lock arms and go in to do this stuff together. We advocate together for programs. And we identify solutions, and that's, I think, a really important piece to think of when you think of First Suburbs, is we're really solution-focused. What can we do to make our jobs better? What can we do to make our communities better? Um, and what I'm really excited to show you now is, is we really are making our communities stronger, and our efforts are working, both as a collective and individually. So we were uh, really pleased when we found out in just the last couple of weeks that um, Cuyahoga County is, is sitting in a nice spot. And as I started to dig into this information, I realized that our four suburbs are, are really responsible for a lot of that um, good that's happening right now and those increases in values. 14 of our 19 member communities have exceeded the county's average of 16% increase in residential property value. We're seeing 18 of 19 of first suburb cities exceeding the county's average commercial real estate, and many of them doubling it. We're also seeing 13 of our 19 communities surpass the county average of 8.7% industrial value. So people are seeing that we are a good buyer. I think another piece to look at that's real important for us when you think of 25 years is that we have some major projects going on that have been empty project sites for decades. Um, one of them that I'll highlight is, is Bedford's uh, Tinker's Creek Commerce Park. Um, 28 acres have sat there for over 20 years just waiting to get movement on. Um, as Mike says, we're, thank you, we're rounded third and headed to home. Um, we've got some great new businesses that are 
um, so a couple of existing businesses and, and some new opportunities coming to the city of Bedford. This could not have happened without the collaboration um, that the county brought to the table and others that are representing um, one of Bedford's businesses have, have used her skills um, to help get us there. Um, so excited to talk about Sleeper Heights, Top of the Hill, um, know that site so intimately well. $80 million of investment in that site that just sat there for decades. Um, also important to mention um, what was often talked about is, is one of the um, most available sites because of its proximity to all of our highways here in Northeast Ohio was Bedford Heights Old Mr. Coffee site. And it's great to see all energy and investment over there as well. Um, another exciting piece that I, I've really been impressed with lately as I watch things change in Cuyahoga County is our first number of philosophies of reducing urban sprawl and fix it first are now really working their way into policy and the mindset of regional entities. And, and this is happening through first suburbs representation on these boards. So um, I appreciate and applaud the mayors that are, are really talking our talk and walking our walk as they sit there and represent us on, on boards like NOACA and um, County Planning Commission and the land bank. Um, a couple of programs I want to tell you about that we've been working on real hard the last couple of years. Um, our Northeast Ohio Advanced Energy District launched in 2010 um, with the idea of we have older building stock in Cuyahoga County and we need a program to um, bring energy efficiency and potentially alternative energy generating projects um, to those buildings. We want to keep the businesses we have. We want to give them an edge. We want to help reduce their costs and increase their profits. I'm happy to say that starting with 14 communities and now representing 24 of Cuyahoga County's communities, our Northeast Ohio Advanced Energy District has brought about $30 million worth of investment to our communities, which otherwise may not have happened. And I think that's the important piece to really talk about here is we've had projects as small as $100,000 and projects as large as $7 million. And every one of them has gotten the same amount of attention and effort from our group. Um, our citizens are code enforcement software group. You know, this started as a discussion at our monthly housing committee meetings. Hey guys, my system's not working. How's yours working? Boy, mine's not working either. Um, thanks to a $25,000 grant from the Cleveland Foundation, we did some feasibility and some research. And we said, is there any chance that we can do this stuff together? I'll never forget, we presented this at Garfield Heights City Hall about maybe seven, eight years ago. And at the end of the presentation, I said, okay, so who wants to do this? And about five, maybe six hands raised, and I think we called them the Coalition of the Willing for a short time. Um, I'm happy to now say that that group is going to expand to 11 communities with our 11th community coming on very soon. It's been an incredible connection for us to make the kind of fiscal. They're receiving our information faster. We're receiving information from them much faster. It's, it's providing incredible opportunity for us to grow and save tens of thousands of dollars a year each um, coming right from that is the GIS Working Group. Um, I had the opportunity to meet um, the county's new GIS um, administrator, Tom Fisher. He was part of our code enforcement software um, connection and said, you know, I've done this other work in other regions, and I think your group would be right for that as well. So we're helping 11 communities um, get GIS services in their communities. We're working to train them. Again, this is another federal grant from the Cleveland Foundation that's getting everyone um, time on Esri and equipment to get them started in data collection. Over COVID, we spent a lot of time making sure the city had connection to programs. So we reached out to friends at CHN, the United Way, the county, and made sure that everyone knew where opportunity was to help the residents. We've done a lot of education over the last year as well, too. I know we've all spent a lot of time on Zoom, but boy, it was great to have people like GCP jump on and talk to us about new programs. Um, Nate joined us numerous times to talk about what's going on in the market so people can have a better understanding of not only their community, but how it's impacting the region as well. Um, I also have to shout out to Bricker and Eckler, who've been a great partner as well, to join us to talk about other finance um, things that are happening across the state so that we can learn a little bit more about opportunity before us. And the last program I want to touch on is our Single Family Housing Zoning Update Project. We've got great support from the County Land Bank on this project. And I would say, we, we have 2,200 infill lots that are ripe for redevelopment, and we really want to make an impact in our communities. And I'll, I'll hear from Sally Martin saying, 
I don't want to be embarrassed that I let this opportunity pass me by. We want to do right by these sites, and we want to build something that's new and interesting, and something that we're not embarrassed to walk by in 10 years. I took some time this year, and we'll continue to work on um, grabbing our 25 years of history. It's been really cool to sit down with some of our kind of original founding members. Ken Montlap and Jim Rokakis gave me a, a, about a half an hour each, and it's a, a, a great listen to remember why we're here and what's happening. Um, Boo Tisler's interview I just released last week, and it was great to get his perspective um, on first efforts in the past and kind of how he sees us now in his new role. And, uh, Mayor Velo and I probably sat on a little longer than we should have, but her interview will come out soon as well. She really was the first mayor um, to get involved with her suburbs, and I will always say that she changed the trajectory of the organization. As soon as we had mayors on, that meant that people were going to listen. So uh, any good organization is good partners, and I have to thank those partners. Um, first one is Cuyahoga County. Um, you guys are there. You guys listen. Um, yeah, that's great. Thank you to the Regionalized Code Enforcement Software Group. Um, a quarter million dollar grant from Cuyahoga County to get that off the ground. So that was, that was huge. Um, I will also say um, I love the new leadership that's at the helm of the Department of Development. I, I <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, Sarah too. It's it's great to have um, growth in, in those seats and people really know what we really need. So we're looking forward to working with you both. Um, next partner up is, is the county land bank. I honestly don't know where we would be without Cuyahoga Land Bank. So. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I have heard people say to me, call Kim Steigerwald, she'll tell you where that property is. <laughs> um, every one of you is just invaluable to us, and, and we appreciate you. Um, Cleveland Foundation, thank you. I come to you guys with crazy ideas. <laughs> and you have to know that those little $20,000, $25,000 grants that let us test something out, those, those have such a huge return for us. Uh, the George Gunn Foundation is also there when we need them as well. So, thank you. Uh, sponsors this evening, Bricker and Eckler, have been instrumental in getting us off the ground in our PACE district. Yeah. When we tried to launch our district in 2010, um, we did not have a higher entity that was interested in doing this work. So um, it was roll up your sleeves today. And um, Bricker has been there to take care of their poor, broke, little, Advanced Energy District along the way, and I thank you guys for all that you do for us. <laughs> CHN Housing Partners, another sponsor for tonight. I, I just have to acknowledge um, Kevin and his um, willingness to really make sure that that CHN was was taking the opportunity to reach across Cleveland lines and to be more involved in our first suburbs communities. And uh, Kevin is incredible and sees the opportunity and is there to work with us. So thank you to you. <laughs> and our next sponsor for the evening, Christian Wakefield. Um, Nate is not only a, a, a good friend and colleague, but he is, is there for us whenever we have questions and opportunities and we want to understand what we can do to get our cities moving forward. So. <laughs> help to continue to do this work. Um, we need funding and we need programs. We know that right now is a crucial time. COVID is still around and it's still very real for many people. Um, we need neighborhood stabilization funds. We need to make sure that our residents can't stay in their homes, have other housing options should they need rental assistance, and we desperately need repair dollars. Those repair dollars go so fast. Um, we, we need to help residents that are on a waiting list that probably will never be realized. Uh, we just completed a business survey of first suburbs businesses, and no surprise, workforce was at the top of that list for me. Um, we're also hearing about operating capital and, and how can we help with the continued loss of revenue. Um, so you'll be hearing more about that fall soon. <laughs> we also need, um, oops, 
We also need some creativity and some willingness. You know, I, I really appreciate everyone who said, "All right, Jen, tell me about this. How can we do this?" And and I need I need more um, more guts to be able to step kind of outside of that box. Um, I will also again say that those little twenty thirty thousand dollar grants from the Land Bank and the Cleveland Foundation, that's the stuff that allows us to do this, so thank you. This last one's a little bit more personal. Um, you know, I really do kind of think of this group as, as friends and family. Um, I appreciate the respect that we show one another. I appreciate the confidence that we have in one another, that we have in one another that allows us to grow our initiative. And I appreciate the investment of your time, either as a member or a partner for suburbs. It's not easy to do. And I, I appreciate that. I will say I also appreciate very much the return of our former members. You know, people that have been in these shoes and have been in these positions that have now gone on to different um, opportunities and, and see how they can bring back to our organization. So please know that for those people in this room, um, it's appreciated that you, you come back this time and time again. Thank you so much for coming tonight. I appreciate everyone's time. It's wonderful to see three-dimensional people. <laughs> <laughs>